Hello, welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Vonderhaar. Joining us on today's episode, Naranandan Rajan, CEO over at Media Excel, but he asked me to call him Raj. So welcome, Raj. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's it's great to have you here. Can you give for those who don't know about Media Excel, can you give us a little history lesson about the company and what you folks have been doing in the video encoding and transcoding marketplace? Yeah, so Steve, we've been around for 25 years and we're a company that's been very focused in the encoding, transcoding and packaging space. And really it's a company with a great history of engineering innovation, strong engineering DNA. So if you look at incorporation of HEVC, AV1, VBC, and then beyond that, uh, AI enabled encoding that we call DIVA, um, it's all about delivering great picture quality and great bandwidth efficiency to our customers. Now, uh, two decades plus, you guys have been all around the alphabet soup of encoding for, for quite some time, but you've only been in the CEO chair there at Media Excel for uh, uh, just part of it. You came in uh, earlier this year. Uh, how are you going about trying to position or, or reposition Media Excel in, in today's environment? Yeah, so when I joined the company in May, um, I realized a couple of things. Number one, when, again, when I look at what we do in terms of picture quality, in terms of bandwidth efficiency, with the codecs we support, with our AI-enabled encoding, um, that on, on that side, I think we're very well positioned. The fact that we can do three-second glass-to-glass latency, again, great for live streaming. I, I realized we don't really have a technology problem or an execution problem. We have a visibility problem. So my focus has really been to make sure the market understands that we exist um, and that we're here to help solve pragmatic problems for our customers. So uh, who are those customers? Who do you sell your solutions to? Who's going to be, uh, when, when they come across the transom, knock on your door, who do you see as the ideal customer for a Media Excel solution? So, so it's interesting, right? I, I, think, I think there is a tendency to try to think of industries in terms of market segments. And the reality is in our space, those market segments have gotten very blurry. There's a lot of overlap. So for us, uh, if you look at any customer that is uh, focusing on transitioning to uh, streaming, focusing on transitioning to an IP infrastructure, focusing on making sure they're very efficient, want to reduce their CDN uh, cloud egress costs, their distribution costs, want to make sure that they're driving great picture quality uh, around a great uh, commercially attractive package. Those are the customers that we want to talk to. And uh, in some instances, they're going to be potentially the larger operators and the larger service providers. But we don't really discriminate because we know that uh, those customers live in a spectrum, across a spectrum, all the way from regional and local service providers to, to national and global providers. So uh, earlier this year, I guess you had your coming out party as a CEO at the uh, IBC conference. That's always a big uh, conference for media and entertainment technology vendors. Uh, did you have any specific focus, any specific themes you tried to get across at that show? Yes. Yeah, so, so the two things that um, we were communicating with you know, the customers that we talked to was, um, yeah, there are technology elements that... Um, we have that we think are differentiated our our diva technology or diva encoding technology we think is differentiated uh we think the fact that we can do low latency live streaming because live uh, live streaming has been the core of what we've always focused on doing really well um is is a little bit differentiated for our customers but at the core of it when we hear customers talk about this a lot is how do we save fundamentally the cost of operation problem for our customers that that is is was still very much a big part of the conversation at IBC with the folks that we talked to. Um, I think you know with with the increasing kind of content acquisition costs, if you will, that continue to put a squeeze on on our customers. Uh, we need to do the things to help them reduce the cost of the infrastructure side, and that's been very much our focus. Yeah, so uh, uh, this is a part where I think we're going to get a chance to do a deeper dive into Diva. The, tell us a little bit about how you're integrating AI into your product offerings. Uh, uh, pull the curtain back on Diva a little bit and tell us why it's special. Yeah, so there there are a couple of things that, that we've really kind of focused on with Diva, 
right? Number one, I, I've talked about the fact that um, we want to make sure that we can drive efficient distribution of high quality content without any net impact in what the customer has to do with the downstream devices. So if you look at the transition from codec to codec, uh, a big part of the reason it's taken so long is because you know you got to wait for the entire ecosystem to catch up. With Diva encoding, you can do that uh, without without having any changes to the downstream devices and only upgrading your encoder. So that's number one. Number two is you know the streaming ecosystem doesn't doesn't really like significant variation in the bit rate downstream, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that you know Diva has been focused on really delivering great quality around a target bit rate and not just going crazy on variable bit rate, I think is a key part of how we differentiate. So we're able to deliver 20 to 30% uh, improved downstream bandwidth efficiency while still operating fairly tightly around a target bit rate, which is very friendly to downstream streaming systems, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think it makes it a compelling proposition. Tell us a little bit about the data that you use to support uh, your AI uh, product offerings within Diva. Is this uh, all data that's developed in house, or are you using external LLMs? Uh, how how are you putting AI? Uh, how are you? What are the raw AI materials that uh, you're leveraging to make these products possible? Yeah, so so we've really built uh, the the learning model in-house. We have trained the model on thousands of pieces of content um, to ensure that we're able to deliver the kind of results that we are able to deliver. Um, I think at the end of the day, when you look at things like in you know, a large language models, those are going to be, I think, interfaces into systems like ours uh, to help folks figure out how to optimize them a little bit better. But what we do with Diva encoding is really go down to things like how do you dynamically set quantization parameters uh, based on the type of content that's coming in and dynamically assign those values so that we create great outcomes for our customers. So having that control over your proprietary data really lets you accelerate the product development process. Uh, uh, tell us about what's uh, going to be coming down the, the, the roadmap even over the next year or so in terms of what you're able to do with AI-infused uh, solutions for encoding and transcoding. Yeah, so we, you know, our initial focus in terms of the Diva encoding has been around HEVC. Uh, because you get the biggest bang for the buck there, really. We'll, we'll extend that to ABC, and depending on, on you know what the market dictates, we'll look at BBC and AV1 as well. But I, I think there's some really interesting opportunities that we've got on the roadmap around Diva pre-processing, which is how do you do things like um, super resolution, image restoration, HDR tone mapping, uh, you know, leveraging uh, Diva pre-processing, on the Diva streaming side, how can you do things like adaptive video streaming or uh, OT, OTT AVR ladder switching, which is another way to drive um, uh, improved efficiency. And then working with partners, Steve. I mean, we realize again, like we're part of an ecosystem. So that's that's uh, one of the reasons we announced our, our partnership with Six Floor Solutions. That's got an AI based uh, um, software that enables automatic highlight event detection within live video streams so we're working right now to incorporate that into into our encoder so uh, customers can potentially have an all-in-one solution right so these are things we're considering over the next year so that, that's uh, what's happening in the short haul now let's uh, gaze into that crystal ball maybe look over the uh, and it's very tough to do to look at a three to five year time horizon in the in anything that's related to AI and video. But uh, dream a little bit for me. Uh, what what should we be thinking about uh, uh, the in terms of the impact of what AI can do uh, for encoding and transcoding solutions uh, over the long term? Yeah. So I I think. Um you want to look at this from a couple of perspectives, right? Number one is basically kind of disruption as a consequence of new companies. And then the other thing you want to look at is where do we think the industry is going to apply the benefits of AI? So if you look at, we talked about the cost of content acquisition, right? So if you look at the top five or six companies in the space, you look at the folks like Disney, you look at the folks like Comcast, you look at the folks like 
uh, Paramount. Uh, you know, you look at the top five Netflix, top five companies in the space. They've they've spent over 120 billion dollars in content acquisition and content development. That's 51 percent of the total spend in the space. There is a deep built-in incentive to try to figure out how to pull AI into the creative process to reduce those content acquisition costs. Now, I think people are being very careful because you know this will send ripples in the wider industry. And so initially you might see some things where people are talking about how do we create ads with AI? How do you apply the creative stuff in lower stake content development as opposed to the, the bigger things? But uh, whether it's you know three years or five years or 10 years, I think that's an arc to some degree uh, that has got some inev inevitability to it simply because of the cost associated with that. The other piece on the other side is, um, you know, uh, industry disruption with, with new entrants. So if you look at the three arcs we've had over the last 20 years, you know, uh, the, the internet was the democratization of access to information. Cloud was a democratization of access to infrastructure. And AI is really about the democratization of access to labor. And so interestingly, Sam Altman talked about, hey, soon you're going to see the solopreneur. What does that mean to our industry? You know, it's a very technical space. And I, I can definitely see where maybe it's not a single individual kind of introducing products that disrupt the space, but smaller teams will have access to technology that allows them to disrupt the space a lot easier. And we have to be aware of that, right? We have to be aware of those disruptions. That's one of the reasons I think MediaXL is in a unique position because we're a mature company, but we've got a very small team. So we're already think of, thinking about how to deliver with a small team in a space that I think is ripe for disruption. Well, on that, we can absolutely agree. I think uh, AI has a bigger impact on the realm of, of video tech than almost any other data category in the enterprise. And companies like MediaXL are right in the middle of the conversation there. So uh, it's been fun talking. Raj, thanks for taking the time to visit with us today. And uh, good luck to you folks at MediaXL moving forward. Thank you, Steve. It's been a pleasure. And we thank you for taking the time to tune in today's episode. If you want access to more industry insight from thought leaders like Raj from MediaXL, just go to the YouTube channel for Intelligent Video Today at the link below. Subscribe and you'll get notifications of future editions of our interview series. For Intelligent Video Today and Intelligent Research, I'm Steve Vonderhaar. Thanks for your time.